and welcome to another episode of Journey of the Rush. My name is Andrea Sachin. Oh, this... Hello? Oh, no way. Alright. Okay, I'll, I'll be right there. Sorry, man. I gotta go. What do you mean, you're sorry? Where are you going? Uh, the under-18s, they called me. I gotta go. You gotta go right... We're in the middle of the episode, man. Come on, sit down. Uh, yeah, the under-18s called me, though. I, I have to go. You can't say no. You're 25. Yeah, it's... Well, what are you gonna do? He hasn't been to bed for over 24 hours. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. Oh, no. yeah. At this point, why not? You got two strict It's a nice shirt. It is a nice shirt. Oh yeah, I am 25. <laughs> You're getting married. Yeah. In the last episode, we talked about Valerie Nichushkin tractors forward, who is supposed to go to play for Team Russia at the under 18s. And the thing is... No. He's, he's supposed to play in the KHL final. But they say he's still going. He's supposed to play in the KHL final! But not only Tractor suffers because of the Under-18s World Championship, Dynamo is also struggling because of that, although it's their junior team that struggles the most. No one should be suffering! Wait two weeks! Two! Everybody feels bad for Tractor because of the whole Nichushkin situation, but check what junior Dynamo team has to pull through. Because the Gagarin Cup is still on, junior team lost to pro team Goalie Alex Ruchankov, Denis Baranzev, Andrei Miranov, and Nikita Lukin. That's four guys. And because of the under-18 championship, they lost Ivan Bacharov, their best goalie after Alex Ruchankov, and their second top goal scorer, Kirill Pilipenko. It's one thing if you're losing players to your own team, because that's what a farm club is there for, to provide players for the big club. For this tournament, I don't know, I just don't understand it. It's hard for me to feel bad about Dynamo's junior team, though, because based on the following video, I know they're gonna pull through. They have character, they have heart. <laughs> what is this, Fight Club? I don't know, but the guy who knocked him down is called Andrei Birukov. He leads the team in points. Tyler Durdanov. Coming back to Nishushkin's topic, I mean, everybody is upset, everybody is sad that he's gonna go and play for Team Russia, but the thing that everybody forgets about, he's been kind of off his game lately. After a stupendous performance in the series against Avangard, Nitrushkin has been okay in the series against Akbars, and it was his mistake in Game 2 of the final series that led to Yana Yalasvar's game-winning goal. Well, can I offer a theory on Nichushkin? Sure. You don't think he might be a little distracted, do you? Enough about Nichushkin. Let's talk about Finnish players. Yane, I'm sorry for bringing this up, but before the series, I wanted to interview, and you told me that it's not your thing because if you give an interview, it turns out next game you play like uh, what's the word for shit. And so you wouldn't play like the word I just said. I didn't interview you, and look what it left you. So you're telling me that not interviewing players makes them better? Big time. Well, that explains why Sidney Crosby's so good. I've never talked to him in my life. Sidney Crosby. Yeah, I smell smashed up. Now, that doesn't work. I interviewed Sidney Crosby. Yeah, but you did it in Russian. That is true. That is true. Speaking of Finns, wapa, Leo Komarov. It's autographed for Andre in what looks like crayon. It's <laughs> all I had. Mm. Leo Komarov got another goal for the Leafs recently, helped them win 2-1 over the Devils, and also he's being a dick, and I love him. Just sparring on the face off between Eliage and Leo Komarov, who doesn't even seem to realize that he's missing his helmet. Now good to have Komarov back in the lineup for that reason. He's been a real thorn in the He's missed the last six with an undisclosed injury. Grabowski to the blue line. Cody Pranson to Mark Fraser. Lobbed one and he scores! A high tip. Is it Komarov who yeah. gets the goal? Uh, he needed his helmet for that one. Can't stay on the ice. 19 games he's been without scoring a goal in that one. He just hits everything. He was getting under Rick Nash's skin in a game against the Rangers. He's just... 
And my favorite thing about Leo is there's a lot of players in the NHL that will hit you and then they'll stand around like, and what's anyone going to do about it? Leo just goes, huh? Is he also off to the under 18th? Yeah, uh, that's, he's probably like, yeah, I gotta go. And it's not a cowardly thing, it's just a nonchalant, yeah, I hit the guy, yeah, well, this is what I get paid to do, okay, see ya. I just love Finnish players, their names, and their movies. Leo Comerant's in a movie? Maybe in a commercial, I should check. Okay, here's the story. Last Sunday I had nothing to do, so I figured I'd explore Finnish cinematography. As one does. Had a man. So I came across this movie, and as you can see, I cannot pronounce its name. So the movie is about a guy, his girlfriend, and his friends, and they all live in Lapland, Laplandia, where Santa Claus lives. Basically, yeah, northern Finland. In an intro of the show, you opine and they tell you a story of how five generations of people hung themselves on that tree. And they all had legitimate reasons to hang themselves, like they were out of jobs, they live in northern Finland, stuff like that. There's no legitimate reason! Until this sequence comes up. As you can see, it's a hockey game between Finland and Sweden. Finland is up 5-1, but they end up losing this game 6-5. It happened in the World Championship back in 2003. And for one person who eventually hung themselves on that tree, that was the last ray of hope. And after Team Finland lost, he went... На мгновение Кали представил себе, что все еще будет хорошо. Но шведы забили подряд две шайбы, и счет стал 3-5. Затем они выровняли счет до 5-5. Пять один. Представляете? Было пять один, а стало пять пять. И еще одна шайба. Шведы сделали нас просто опозорив навсегда. Ну ладно. Особенности национальных потерь и приобретений или герои полярного круга. All in all, great movie. Any questions? Why did we show this? Well, I thought it was funny. And hey, there was a hockey thing in the beginning. I think that's enough internet for today. Where you go? The under the start at the 18th. Yeah, I'm walking. I'm, I really hope you're a good swimmer, Steve. I really hope so. I'm not. All right, might as well talk about one more thing. And that's Alex Ovechkin. Wait, how did you get from... It was weird. Now! A month ago, maybe two months ago, oh, the things people were saying about Alex Ovechkin. He's a bum, he's washed up, he'll never score like he used to ever again. Look at him now. For Backstrom, he offers to Ribeiro on the weak side, SCORE! Slam dunk, Alex Ovechkin. Timmons was there to guard Backstrom, Ovechkin tries to cradle through Kuba, SCORES! Ovechkin with sleight of hand. That is a sweet move. Backstrom doesn't call his own number. Johansson, Ovechkin, half trick. Alex Ovechkin for zip. That is. He has been named the NHL's Player of the Week multiple times, and he has gone on a meteoric rise to the top of the point standings. He's now sixth, tied for first in goals, and he has 15 goals in his last 12 games. And people who are saying he was a bad leader. Well, the Washington Capitals sucked at the beginning of this year, and they currently find themselves at the top of the Southeast Division in third place in the East. Yeah, man, by one loss, and they're out of the playoff zone. Well, that's true, but it's not his fault the division sucks. Obviously, 15 goals in 12 games is stupid, but is, what is even more stupid is that Alex Ovechkin led Dynamo in goal scoring and scoring this season. He played, what, 23 games, I believe? 40 points. 40. And this is how you know we don't script our show, because I had to check and he actually played 31 games, but it's still stupid. Yeah. He even leads the Swedish league in scoring. But he didn't play there. That's what makes it so impressive. Hmm. And at the end of this video, we would like to congratulate our big fan and buddy, Sergei Fedotov, who won the vote for commentary for the final series of the Gagarin Cup. But what Sergei doesn't know is that our own Steve Danglin was this close for taking his job. Hey, yo, Tickman. Ponikarovsky rushing for around the net for a soaking goal! Shabu Barota! Stop, buddy! Ponikarovsky! Holy crap! I'm good, right? You're not bad. You're not oh, bad. Спасибо. Спасибо. Yeah,
We shot this video way back in the day when we interviewed KHL TV commentator Andre Yurtaev, but for whatever reason it never went up, but hey. So wait, did Yurtaev win? No. Well, it's because you interviewed him. Like he's got his own show. So do we. That's all for this extremely weird episode of Joining the Rush on the KHL's official YouTube channel. Once again, my name is Steve Dangle and this is... Andreas Sashenko. Let's all hope I'm not going to interview you guys. No. Ovechkin! Hey! Ovechkin! Snami Ovechna! Snami Ovechna! Hey! Yo! I forgot the words, I'm sorry. You ruined everything! And it was his mistake, Valerie Nichushkin's mistake, that led to Yana Laz... Ah! <laughs> Yana Lyalafa. Yana Lyalafa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna go, don't you mean <laughs> Oh yes. <laughs> His mouth looks like, what's the word for f <laughs> Man, have you seen his smile? Holy. That's two penguins without the real teeth now. Fleury and Crosby. Fleury too? No first row. It's all fake. That's why they're so white and yeah. shiny! I never knew that! <laughs> I always just thought he was like Willy Wonka. You know Johnny? Any day. Oi, oi, oi! Shut what it! Who is it? Ilya Ishov! Oh! <laughs> he knows exactly what I'm talking about, too. Yeah, he also knows the guy, Alek Mosalev. Yeah? Yes, uh... Oh, I just think his voice is so amazing. Ishov! <laughs> <laughs> there you go, okay. <laughs> Yeah.